Hi everybody, we're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast, Thanksgiving Week. Father, we we're just thankful, praise Lord. you. We are so thankful. We just worship mm -hmm. you. Thank God Jesus is Lord. Oh, yes, amen. Thank God he's Thank been raised you, from the dead. Thank God mm. for your word. We thank God yes. oh, that so we've passed from death unto life. Mm. And we give you praise and honor for it. In Jesus', In name. Jesus name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Gloria, let's go back over and look in, the, uh, in John chapter 1, John's gospel. We're talking about this week five different things. Uh, you know, I've been flying airplanes now well over 50 years, and, and uh, one of the first things I learned, particularly from, from uh, old uh, experienced pilots that had been flying a long, long time, use your checklist. Don't memorize it, yeah, but don't depend on your memory. Keep that checklist in your hand and you see to it every time you fly that airplane, you're never in too much of a hurry to, to skip that checklist. You check because as you check those off, the, the next one depends on the first one. You do this, now you're ready to do that. You do that one, now you're ready to do this and so forth. Now, as when you get down to the end of the checklist, you have gone through everything that it took to power up the, the system, everything it took to start it, everything it took to, to uh, prepare it for takeoff. Each step provides for the next one. And when you get done and, and you get ready to put the power up on that thing, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking right now about a situation where a crew put the power up and when they got the voice recorders back, the guy had, had called out flaps for takeoff. The co-pilot answered flaps for takeoff, but he never moved the handle. Hmm. He just, he answered it and uh, he's going through the checklist and he probably touched it. But he was not paying attention to what he was doing. Now, when he took off, they couldn't figure out how come the airplane wasn't ready to fly. They were in bad weather. And, and it, he, he, it finally mushed and mushed and mushed around and mushed around and crashed in a river, uh, an ice frozen river right off the end of the airport out there. And it, it was a horrible deal. Well, what was the matter? The checklist would have taken care of him there if he'd just taken the time just to, just to make certain you do everything. That's when, that's, a, right. when, when and I, uh, that's the way I use these steps and points in my own life. That something begins to get out of shape here and I'm thinking, what? I mean, I, what is it I haven't done? You never go to God and say, how come you didn't do this? Now, how, are you kidding me? He's already done it. It's already been done by him. For instance, your words are equivalent to on the checklist, wheels down and locked. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, it's part of it. Yeah. And just because you thought you did it isn't good enough, you come in there and you let your flare out and you back, and all of a sudden you hear boom, this boom. bad scraping sound. You, you know you missed something on the That's checklist. Right. And so we don't do that. You don't want to do that. Mm -mm. Now. And, and, I, and at times I, I'd be praying and, 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 uh, and meditating on these things and, and there'd been times that I'd just see that list right there come up before me. Oh. Yeah, of course. How did I let that slip? Yeah. So put the Word of God first place in your life. That is step one. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God. The Word was God. That's John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same as in the beginning with God. If you have the Word of God, you have God. And the Word, 
God, love, light. He's all of these things. And the, the top of the list of these things, according to the Bible, is His Word. Amen. Amen. So put that first. Now, number two, earnestly pray, thy will be done. Earnestly. Well, yeah, but no, bro, whoa, whoa, brother Copeland, I mean, whoa, man, I mean, what, what, quit, quit, quit backing up. Remember, put the Word of God in first place. Now, you say yes to the Word before you understand uh, anything about it, but you, you never will understand it unless you put it first. You put Him first, then as you, you begin to learn, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, and he'll teach you That's how to right. put it in motion, like staying out of debt or, or uh, other things that the Word says you don't think you can do. Had no idea could do it. Knew good and well I couldn't do it. Well, that's right. I couldn't do it. I was, all, I was right all the time. But I found out it was his will to do it, his plan. You could pray this. Thy plan be done on earth as it is in heaven. Has anybody got a bunch of problems in heaven? Is anybody no. earning their living in heaven? No. Is it, no, not at all. So the plan of God is perfect. It is the perfect place to be. Let me read you something here from, um, oh, let's, let's see. Um, 1 Corinthians 12 the uh, 18th verse. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. He's got a plan for everybody. He has a plan for the situation you're in right now. And as we pray, see, I, all I did was agree with Jesus. Now, I want to look back over here now at the book of Luke. At the, in the 22nd chapter there, there is an outstanding revelation here. So listen carefully. Very simple, but it has been twisted and altered enough by religion and carnal thinking to get it to a place where Jesus said, your traditions make the Word of God no effect. So you can get it over here where you think you're praying this and all the time you're, you're, you're literally condemning your faith because it produces fear. And, and fear is to tolerate fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. It'll contaminate your faith and get it to a place where it, it negates it and, and you're trying to work and operate by faith because fear is a form of faith. If I have fear of a dangerous animal, it's because I have faith in that animal's ability to hurt me. So if I'm putting that into motion, I'm putting faith into motion, but it's working in the wrong way. It's attracting that animal to me. Now, in the um, Gospel of Luke, the 22nd chapter here, 42nd verse, Jesus is praying. Now listen to what he said. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now remember, he, in praying, he said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your plan be done on earth as it is in heaven. If it be, if it be your plan, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my plan, but your plan be done. Amen. Now, people in thinking they are uh, doing the same thing will say, oh God, heal me if it be your will. You don't know. Well, the, and, and if you don't know, faith begins where the will of God is known. I heard a uh, fellow on television one time, I was supposed to be 
uh, news commentary. And, and he, he made this statement. I don't even remember now what he's talking about, but, but, he, but this I remember. He said, who could ever know the will of God? I hollered at him. I said, I do. And the scripture says very plainly, we are supposed to know the will of God. I'm telling you, you start right here. That's right. This is the will of God manifested for us in the earth. How do I know that? Folks, let me tell you something. This book is just as much a manifestation of God as the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the healing power of God, uh, the supernatural. The, uh, supernatural, the creation. Why? In the beginning was the Word, words with God, and the Word was God. This is a manifestation of God. So now I take this and I say, Lord, show me your will in this. And then I find out that it is the will of God for all men for all time to be healed. I didn't find that out from religion. I never would have found it out there. But when I studied all of the healing scriptures in the New Testament, studied all of the miracles of Jesus, and then took all of those situations and then went back to the old covenant, covenant key word here, and, and God said all over the old covenant, I'm he that heals you. I will heal you. I'm not the one that cursed you. I'll heal you. So, and I realized he sent his word and it healed them. If you have the word, you have God. If you have the word, you have the will of God. You have the plan of God. Amen. And I began to say this many years ago. I have no will but your will. It is my will to be one with your will. You don't, you, you don't, oh, my will must be destroyed. My will, no, 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 no. That is absolutely religiously 180 degrees wrong. I don't, my will, I've heard people say, well, my will must crumble. No, no, you don't need a crumbled will. No. We've been born again in the New Testament. We have the mind of Christ. We have the will of God in his word. No, I don't need my will to crumble. I need to subject it to him. My will is stronger than it has ever been. Amen. My soul is made yes. up of my mind, my will, and my emotions. It is stronger than it has ever been in 75 years. But my will is strong to obey His will at all times. And when my will tries to get out of line here, no, you don't do that. You just subject it to the will of God. You yield, like that yield sign we were talking about on yesterday's broadcast. You yield to that. Yield to his yes, plan, his yeah. will. That's Realizing right. his plan is better. He's not doing this to punish you. No, no, no. He's, he's not out to punish you. He is out to bless you. He's out to get you in your laughing place. He's out to get you healed. He is out to prosper you in every way. Spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, in every way. He yeah. is out, out to bring heaven on earth to you. Amen. The blessing of the Lord. Amen. Thy plan be done. Your will be done. Jesus said, not my plan, but your plan. That's totally different than if it be your will. If is a badge of unbelief. Faith begins where the will is known. So seek the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now then, Gloria, let's go to Jeremiah 29. I want to read this out of the New Living Bible. Um, in the uh, King James authorized version, the 11th verse says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me and go and pray unto me, and I'll listen to you. Wow. That's it. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things be added to you. Amen. All right, now listen, listen to this in the New Living. For I know the plans 
I have for you. The King James said, my thoughts. So every, God don't just think a whole bunch of thoughts and, and pick a few. No, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. When the scripture says wealth and riches shall be in your house, like in the 112th Psalm, his idea of wealth and riches is a whole lot different than yours and mine. For well, my word goes forth out of my mouth into the thing, and it will prosper in the thing where I, whereunto I sent it. I remember... Uh, what Bill Winston told about the man that was doing business back in the days in the 60s and 70s when doing business with Arabs was a, a big thing. And um, he had done well in, in business for this, uh, this Arab. And so the, the man's assistant came to him and said, uh, the sheik would like to bless you some way or another because of he said, well, you don't need to do that. He said, no, no, no. Now you turn him down. It's an insult. You don't, you don't want to do that. He said, okay. So what would you like to have? He said, oh, oh well, just, just have him give me a golf club. That'd be all right. You know, he's thinking about a nine iron or a driver. When get, people give gifts, they usually give some, some special driver, some mm -hmm. custom made driver with a special shank and you know, all that. And went on about his business, came back to the United States, and, and um, he got a call then several weeks later and said, uh, we would like to meet with you and take you to your golf club. What? Yeah, your golf club. What golf club? Well, your request was for a golf club. <laughs> he bought him a country club. It was like an eight. That. Teen, oh, fabulous, marvelous thing. But see, his idea of a golf club is totally different from what this man's idea. Now, this man that's, that's doing the thinking about the golf club has got billions of dollars. This man thinking about the driver hadn't, had, doesn't have much compared to him. Yeah, he may be right. doing all right. He may have a couple of hundred thousand. But he ain't going to buy a country club and no hundred thousand dollars. But when that man heard golf club, he didn't think about something to swing with. He thought of something about for everybody to come play on. That's the way God, that's his ways are that far that's the higher. Truth. His yeah. plans are that much Funny. higher than our plans and our ways. His way works. Our way stumbles. He's righteous. That's what righteous means. It works right. Yeah, yeah. When he said, let there be light, it went. Yeah. When we say, let there be light, we just. Thinking about one room. If you can find the switch. <laughs> if you can find the switch. But yeah. I mean, he, he's thinking about universes. <laughs> We're thinking about light switches. That's, that's, that's true. That is an excellent illustration. Now, let me go back here now. Now, listen to this. Instead of saying thoughts, listen to what this translates, which is more closely to the Hebrew text. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and yeah. not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I'll be found of you. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I'll gather yes, you I out know. of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. Praise God. Now, if it's God's will to restore your fortune, it was His will for you to have a fortune to start with. Amen. That's right. That's the way He thinks. He's not talking about you being able to pay your rent. He's talking about you having a fortune. What, why is it called a fortune? Because you're fortunate. What does that mean? You've got more than enough in any situation, any time. Oh, Brother Copeland. Well, now, wait a minute. Put your gun up till I finish here. <laughs> Don't start shooting at me because you religious unbelief. He is able, the scripture says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, to make all grace abound yeah. towards you. Why? So that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound Hallelujah. to every good work. Amen. That's his plan. Isn't that great? He doesn't have any other plan for you. Now, let me, let me go back over here, Glory. There, there's something else here 
that gives you the freedom and the thrill without fear to pray, your planning will be done in my life. Amen. Listen to this. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. I'm, I'm not planning to blow your house away in a hurricane to teach you something. I'm not planning to flood you out. I'm not planning to put cancer on you. I'm not planning none of this. I am planning good yeah, to give you a it. future and a hope in those days when you pray, I'll listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Praise God. You can know my will. Yes. Now, in closing here today, let's read from Revelation. Ah, Revelation. Let's read from Romans. Both of them start with an R, don't they? They do. <laughs> in the 12th chapter... Romans 12, notice this now. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. By what? Mercies. By the correction, damnation, heart, and no, by the mercies of God. You present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, he didn't say, you have to make your body holy before you present it. He said, I call it holy, present it to me. Acceptable. I will accept it, which is your reasonable service. And, and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will or plan of God? Amen. Amen. Prove it. Other translations said that you know and fulfill his perfect plan. His plan is good. His plan is awesome. out there. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, earnest, this is step two now. Number one, put the Word of God final authority in your life. Number two, earnestly pray. Your will, your plan be done in my life. I am yours to command. I'll say what I hear you say. I'll do what I see you do. Glory and I'll be back in just a moment. Love is a powerful thing. In fact, it's the most powerful force in the universe. The Yield to Love CD set by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland will help you grasp this understanding. These things right Discover how great God's love toward you is and how motivated He is to bless you. Manifested because of being born of God and knowing Him. Your life should and can be an expression of His love toward the people you reach every day. You can operate in the power of faith-filled love and allow God's love to motivate everything you do. Yield to that love and let it lead you every step of your life. See where God's love takes you. Let God's love lead you and become your motivation for everything you do. Request your free copy of Yield to Love, the CD teaching by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Learn how to yield to the most powerful force in the universe and discover all the benefits God has in store for you. Receive your free copy of Yield to Love online when you go to kcm.org or when you call or write to us today. This gift offer is good for 30 days, one per household, please. I want to send you this free. I'm sowing it into your life, into your ministry, into your family. Yield to love, the benefits of walking in God's love. There's two CDs in here. One of them is by, by me, the other one by Gloria. And uh, faith works by love. Yes, it does. The Bible also says that perfected, growing, maturing love casts out fear. Praise God. 
you, the, when you're living and walking and you release the force of love, you release God's power and authority on purpose. But did you know that, that uh, fear can be cast out without you even saying anything to it? But when you, now, it's not wrong to say anything to it or misunderstand it, but the power of this, see, it, it's not just the love. It is faith-filled love. And when I begin to thank God, oh, thank you for loving me so. Yes. God loves Kenneth. God loves Gloria. Oh, God loves this family. God loves you. God loves all. God, I love you, Father, with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I place my love upon you. I love my neighbors myself. I, I, I love the brethren even as you love the brethren and gave yourself for us. Or oh, the more you say these things, the, the, the stronger and bigger it gets. Fear can't stay in that environment. Amen. Amen. This, this, this is vital information. Be led by the love of God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and was God. Well, God is love. So in the beginning was love. In the, be the Word is the Word of love. Praise God. Pray, we, they, we went back to, they went back to the archives. And, and uh, they've been going through all of the all of the tapes, all of the TV broadcasts, everything in our archives and um, uh, vaulting them digitally. A lot of it was on tapes. And those, those tapes get old and they disintegrate in, in some ways. And so to, to preserve them. And these messages oh, came God. out of the archives yeah. and they put them together. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember this, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org. While you're online, you'll discover a resource of faith-based teaching and free information to help you find the answers you're looking for. If you need prayer, call Kenneth Copeland Ministries prayer line today. When you walk by faith, everything is going to be all right. Tomorrow on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Unless you obey him, you're, you're not in, in a position, not because he doesn't want to, not because he hasn't already done everything that it takes. It's because you're in a place where you're not listening to him and you're not doing what he tells you to do. And, and then he can't bless disobedience to the place where he can bless obedience.